Yeah, it was it was weird. Yeah. I'm like, you're not allowed. This is the middle of summer. You can't put up a Christmas tree. Like this this should actually be illegal. Right. It's very tacky. It's like, do you know like all of like the silvery Christmas trees and white stuff that like no one buys? The Aussies love that's like the only they think that's what Christmas is. Like just buy the tackiest stuff ever. And yeah, that was that was fun. It's it is very weird. Yeah. Well, the the tradition on Christmas for Australians is to have a picnic, <laughs> and, and to have uh, seafood. That's like that's that's what they do. Seafood. Okay, let's let's start this. Um, since it's not active today, this lecture may go way faster. So would you mind if I let you out a little bit early? Big surprise. Okay. Um, how did the assignment go? Did it all get submitted? Okay, because the next one's going to be harder, and it's going to be coming soon. And don't forget also about your midterm. That's going to happen before the reading week. Right. No. <laughs> Why? Uh, well, someone asked me if we're going to test bash on, the ter like, on that test, and yes, we are going to test bash. Yes. We're going to ask you, like, what should I type into here to, like, move this command to this directory? That, that's all fair game, right? This is the systems programming class, guys. We're going to ask you system programming questions. Yeah. Shh. What? Arrays? No, we're not going to try to trick you, right? Like, it's going to be like, did you do the tutorials, right? And... Did you manage to understand at least the easy stuff from your tutorials, right? If I say, can you move this directory or can you move this file or rename this file? You should be able to do that by this point, right? So I would like say, stop using your GUI if you can. Like it's good practice to just SSH into the lab machines and force yourself to work like that, right? Because it actually cuts you off from the GUI. You are forced to type everything in, right? So again, you shouldn't be studying Unix. You should be using Unix, and by that way you'll you'll pick up pick up these things, right? This isn't useless. This is not something we're making you do because we're trying to keep you busy. This is these are the tools that you're going to be using in industry. You have to be able to use these Unix tools, or you're not going to be software engineers or computer scientists. Period, right? So we we got to up our game because like this is the only way you're going to have access to the to the operating system, right? Uh, okay, so today we're going to finish off what we didn't do last week. And then talk about command line arguments, and then do a little bit of structures. So we are a little bit behind where your PCRS is. So just a summary of what you should have um, determined when studying strings on the PCRS. So a string is an array of characters terminated by a null character. Does the, is the null character included in the string length or not? Yes, it's included in the string length. What's the definitive answer on this? I actually forget the correct answer. Yeah. Okay, but so like, let's not trust professors because sometimes we're dumb. Let's just write something. Okay, um, so the first thing today, okay, let's touch sandbox. Dot C. Let's just give this. Uh, let's open this. Uh, let me see. Int main, right? It's the argument count first. That's an integer, or is it a pointer to an integer? Integer, and then we have a character pointer pointer. So it's a pointer to a. It's a pointer to an array of pointers, which should be the argument. Vector, they call this. Okay, let's define a string. Um, and let's just print out the, uh, and I think it complains that, so when I was learning, everything got printed with this. But I guess now everything has to be printed like this. Or is this, is this what I do for long integers? Yeah, okay, uh, let's print that out. And then string, is it string lang of x? Is that it? What do I? Uh, I think that's OK. Oh, no, yeah, this has to be a pointer. Or I can do this. We're going to discuss all the different ways we can describe strings today. I just first want to see what the length is. I need standard, standard io.h, and I also need Standard lib, probably. And then, what's the other one I probably need? String. 
Did I spell any of this wrong? Standard dial. Okay, well, let's give it a try. Okay. Let me see. Go away. I, I don't use torrents. Why do I even have that program? This. Uh, GCC out. I'm just going to call it a.out. Uh, let's compile sandbox. And I got an error. Why? Because I returned nothing. And then we just compile this a.out. Four. So, hmm. It doesn't include the empty character. Huh? Well, that's what I mean. Okay, so the actual length, well, it depends what we mean by actual length, right? So if I ask the question, how much memory is required to store this, you would have to say five characters, right? But the string length, when you ask it for the length of the string, it would seem it doesn't include the null character. So this is important, or you're all going to be off by one. Yeah. OK, so which? how are we asking you to find the string length? OK, so uh, something I have to mend about size of. So I told you a deliberate lie. Has anyone uncovered it yet? It's regarding size of. I said you could only take size of types. That's technically not true, but also technically true. right? You can only take size of variables that are declared in the stack. And all variables declared in the stack have types. So really, when you're just if, you're, if I ask for the size of x and x is declared as an integer, it's just telling you what the size of an integer is. So it still is the case that you can only take size of types. Like, you can't take the size of anything dynamically allocated. Um, so I, I just want you to use size of int, size of char, not size of x, right? At this level, right? You should never have to say add size of x unless the, that data type is changing. I personally write in the types, right? So it's a lot more explicit. OK, so it's just keep in mind that string length d does not include the null character. Right? This is probably going to be, th these are perfect questions for midterms trying to trick you guys. So just remember the nuance, right? The memory allocated for Paul is actually five characters because it includes the null character. Well, what, what about, if, what happens if I do this? What's it going to report now? Same thing, you reckon? Yeah, four. OK, so that's good to know. Where's my slides? Here. Uh, copying a string from one array into another can cause buffer overflow. And we're going to talk about buffer overflow a little bit more specifically. And I'm going to tell you a couple fun stories about buffer overflow errors. Uh, this overflow is caused by failing to check the size of source data and input before copying into a buffer. So I don't know why we're talking about this before defining string copying. Um, OK, so the, basically this is a slide talking about copying. Well, I don't understand. Okay, in any case, strings are special in C, right? Why can't we take the length of an array? Or maybe a different question would be, under what circumstances could I take the length of an array? If, like, what agreement would we have to make? Yeah. Like, we'd have to agree on some end of array symbol, right? If we agreed on an end of array symbol, we could calculate the length of any array. But calculating the length of an array then would be a linear operation, and that would be a disaster. OK, so keep that in mind when um, doing string length, that the, taking the length of a string is a linear operation on the length of the string. Because basically, you're counting from the beginning of the pointer all the way to the null character. Right? The null character is the thing that makes string totally different than any other data type that we have, and which is why it's going to be the first part of this lecture, right? because this null character really makes things special. OK. But now you can imagine if I go into memory and declare two strings like this, foo and bar. Does anyone know what foo bar stands for? Look it up. <laughs> it's vulgar. Um, there you go. One guy. F'd up beyond all reason is what foo bar stands for. Right? I don't know how it became the standard notation for uh, anonymous functions. But in any case, suppose I. Um, have foo and bar in memory. And then I give an instruction to C to copy Mississauga into where foo was. Now, C's not going to stop you. But can anyone see what has happened here? Yeah. 
yeah, so where, where we formerly had two strings, we now have one, right? But you still have two pointers into this. So the character buffer two is actually now the string saga. And the, the, the buffer for one is Mississauga. Right, so again, the, the computer is just counting until it finds the null terminating character. So you've got to be really careful with this null terminating character. When is it not put in to the string automatically? And when is it put into the string automatically? We'll get there, right? But it's, there are at least three different ways of declaring strings. So the possible, so I hope you're now getting an appreciation that managing memory is hard. And I've had people ask me questions like, what does it mean to hack a computer? This, hacking a computer basically means playing tricks on memory and exploiting human error in buffering. One of the most well-known buffer exploits uh, was created by this fellow called Morris, who is at MIT. Poor guy. He just thought that the operating system that they were using at the time was too exploitable. So he was sort of white hat hacking. And he said he made a worm. And he says, look, look how easy it is for me to like gain access to the computer and um, gain privileged access to the operating system. Now, he accidentally created it so that what he wanted to do was for this thing just to go onto the computer to demonstrate to his colleagues that it could run. But what it was doing, it was copying itself like over and over and over again. Like the bug never checked. Don't install onto the computer unless, don't install onto the computer if the bug is already installed. So you'd have a computer and the worm would just reinstall itself over and over and over again until like, you all, like all your processes were running this worm. And if the worm could get into the network, it would transfer to someone else's computer. And all of this was done using buffer exploits, heap and stack buffer exploits. And it took down 10% of the computers connected to the computer at, at the time. 10%. It's not that much. It's not as much as now. But still, it's a lot. Right? This happened again in 2003. I don't know if any of you know what the MS blast worm was. You know, these viruses aren't as typical as they used to be back in the day. But I remember when I was your age, um, like we would occasionally get a virus that would spread really quickly. And we'd have to go back home and fix all of our computers for our parents and younger siblings and so on and so forth. But uh, you, you can imagine that if you know the memory location for where a Boolean is stored, you could overwrite. Uh, you, another process can do a check of username and password, put fault like fail into memory, and then you can be like, ah, uh, pass. Right? So instead of hacking the password, you've just stuck true into a, into a memory segment where it shouldn't have been. That would be a way of getting past this authorization. Right? Or you can force pieces of code into sections of memory which have been walled off for executable files by the operating system. Right? These walls aren't real. Right? You, there are tricks to get into other parts of memory. So the architecture of your computer is changing to fight this. So the kernel level of the computer, which is the thing with, that's abstracting like the memory allocation, the, it's not sequential anymore. It's randomized. It's, it's basically taken the sequenced memory, randomized it into chunks. So you can't predict from like the human layer uh, where your buffer is going to over buffer. If it was all one line, this is very easy, easily predictable. If you know I need to be at address 1 and the address I want to overwrite is at 9, right? then you just over buffer. Right, but now it's a little bit more complicated, but still possible. Uh, Firkin loves memes and Drake. I like neither of those things, <laughs> especially the latter. Drake's not, I don't, I don't understand Drake. He was, he was better on, he peaked on Degrassi, in my opinion. All of you are going to be on the forums tonight. Screw Professor Verbeck. Drake's the best. Okay. So when Unix was first created, they put a hard limit on the size of strings. I think it was like 50. Given that there was a hard limit on the size of strings, that basically eliminated the need for checking for string buffer errors, right? Because you could never go over 50, right? So they had all of these commands like string copy, string concatenate, string length, um, sprintf. I don't know what that is. And gets. Those are really unsafe. 
right? Those aren't protecting you against buffers, right? So I could, I could use string copy to emulate the last slide where I had foobar and overwrote Mississauga. It, string copy doesn't say, hold on a second, th there's a null character here. Are you sure you want me to overwrite this null character? It's like, oh, there's a null character here. Gone, right? Copied, right? So these subsequent ones were made later, string n copy, string n cat, n length, where basically you give it two things. You say, look, here's the thing I want you to copy, and here's where I want you to stop. Right, so if, if I accidentally send you a string of length 1,000, you're going to stop copying letters at 10. So it's a little bit more safe. We're not done with memes yet. Here's another meme. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with this, but uh, I think the brain power of the individual increases as you move down. Right, so the top is the dumbest, most primitive thing, and the bottom is like what a genius would do. I don't know. You guys are youths. Did I describe that mean properly? Is it being misused in this instant? Yeah. The general point of the meme is that it progressively gets dumber as the brain expands. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I didn't make this meme, right? But I feel this is what happens when like your parents discover something. It's like I can meme. I I know gifts as well. I'm cool. Okay. Well, in any case, I'm. As we move down this, it's better, right? We're going to override what the meme actually means. But uh, maybe you can, someone can tell me why. Okay, so the first thing is the dumbest thing to do because there is absolutely no protection on the buffer, buffer over buffering, right? That's the weakest thing. That, that's what someone dumb would do or maybe a high school student. Okay, the next thing is better. The next thing you're going to declare a global variable, a global constant actually called the maximum string length. You're going to set it to, I don't know, 100. And you're just basically going to let all of your character arrays be length 100. Right? And this, when you string copy, you're going to ensure that you're never going to copy more than 100 things. Is that okay? That's technically better than the thing that came before because you have a 100 limit. But it's not perfect because it didn't account for the um, null terminator. That didn't account for the null terminating character. I said the same thing twice. Uh, the next thing is a little bit better, because not only have you set a buffer, like a, a, a hard limit on the largest string you can have, 100, you're also limiting copying into that buffer by saying, look, I need to reserve the very last character here to be the null terminator character. Now, the last is the best option. Why? I want, I want to read it and see if you can figure out what it's doing and why that gets why that gets to be at the bottom. Uh, think for 30 more seconds, right? and then you can answer it. Right? What does string concatenation do? Hmm? Mm-hmm. Great, I like that. Prepend. That's a good word. Huh? Prepend. Mono means one. Uh, rail means rail. Okay, so what this last example is doing, so uh, the gentleman up there says destination gets uh, prepended to, no wait, source gets prepended to destination, right? So you give me destination and source, and what happens is source gets put in and then destination gets put in afterwards at the location of destination. Right? You shouldn't look confused at me because this was definitely on the PCRS. So what this is essentially doing is saying, OK, here's where I want my new string to be copied. I'm going to put the null terminator character there. Give me the string that I want to copy and put it in front of my null terminating character. Oh, beautiful. Right? You can never over buffer, and you're ensured to have a null, your null terminating character there. Now, in this lecture, I'm lazy. I'm not going to do the fourth thing. I'm going to do the first thing. <laughs> but I'm going to say each time I'm going to do the first thing that this is lazy and dangerous. But that's how I like to live. I'm dangerous. <laughs> no, I'm lazy. <laughs> OK, so uh, this is where I would say you guys work. But we're not going to do that today because uh, we're on YouTube. Hello, YouTube. Anyone want to say hello to YouTube? Hello. Hey, what's up, YouTube? Yeah. Please don't demonetize us. 
right? We, we need the money for pizza. OK, so let's write a program that declares three strings. Uh, a string called Monday on the stack frame for main, a string called second as a string literal Tuesday, and a string called third called Wend Wednesday. I say it like that so I can remember how to spell it, on the heap. And then the second part of this is they want us to um, put all the pointers. Uh, oh, no, that's a useless instruction. OK, so let's just do this. Uh, I have my sandbox here. Let's get rid of this. OK, so we needed three things, right? First, second, and third. The first was what? Monday on the stack frame. So how do I get Monday on the stack frame? Make an array. OK. Uh, is this on the stack? Who agrees? OK. For this lecture only, since I'm for relieving you of your active learning duties, I would like you to participate in every vote. <laughs> and I will give an abstain option, but you can, guys can at least raise your hand randomly. Is this on the stack? Who says yes? Who says no? Who's abstaining? Nice. Nice, Switzerland's. OK. It's on the stack. And it's on the stack. OK, so I told you, I've been telling you sort of like white lies. Because if I tell you the whole truth at the beginning, it's overwhelming. So I said something about strings that uh, it's easy to tell if a string is declared on the stack because you have to tell the, tell, like, there has to be sizing information given with it. Now, there is no sizing information given here. But this is notation. This is notation for the stack of main to automatically determine the size for Monday. Right, so if I were to do this, so one, two, three, four, five, six, if I were to do this, uh, you would say, yes, stack. But I remove it, and it's sort of automatically put there, like as a comp by C. So this is also sort of like telling, declaring what the size should be locally. With a little white lie. If I'm going to tell you a white lie, then I'm going to correct it. OK, what was the next thing we had to do? The next thing was string literal Tuesday. How do I define a string literal? Char star uh, second has to go to Tuesday, like this. No. The last one has to go on the heap. OK, so how do I get this on the heap? Malloc, OK, so I'm going to char. It has to be a pointer to third. I have to malloc some space. I'm going to have to malloc, well, I'll say some number times size of char, which is just one in this case. But what's the number? OK, w e, w e d n e s d a y. That's for, OK, but plus for the null character, 10. You sometimes see this written like this, right? Some programmers like to really be explicit that they're declaring another piece of memory for the null character. Um, my philosophy is that the less you type, the better, because that's less likely to introduce errors. But whatever. What do I know? Uh, OK, let's try printing these things just to see what happens. OK, so I'm going to print uh, first. I'm going to print f uh, second. I'm going to print f. And I, I believe I don't have to dereference any of these. Okay. First, second, third. All right. Turn 0. Let's see if this works. Monday, Tuesday. Where's my Wednesday? I didn't actually load anything into third. OK, so um, this sucks because there's no nice way of doing this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We can't do a for loop, because then I'm just going to have to write, well, I could do a for loop, but then I have to write an array and load that with the things for, oh, no, I could do it this way. I could do it this way. Oh, my god, I'm an idiot. Dr. Idiot. Um, I could use a string copy. Yeah, yeah, let's just use a string copy. OK, so <laughs> maybe I should let you come up here and teach, right? Um, OK, so I want a string copy. I want to copy Wednesday. 
Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I always put this O here. Uh, uh, and I need to put this into third. Okay, but I also want to say this is uh, lazy and stupid. Hooray! Okay. But this is kind of wasteful, right? Because we just threw a string literal into the heap. Right, so we're just like, let's declare some heap memory and then declare other mem like it's like, well, if we just put if we put Wednesday in the global memory, then why don't we just use that one? It was kind of wasteful. So now I feel bad. Maybe I should undo this and do it properly. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it properly. Uh, okay. How's the fastest way I can do this? I don't want a number there. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need a bunch of colons. Uh, this needs to be zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I missed one. Nine. Uh, oh, and I missed all of my semicolons. Okay. W, E, D, N, E, S, D, A, Y. Null. Okay. Okay. I feel better about that. Yeah. Shh. I can't hear the questions. Huh? <laughs> Magic. What's up? Well, yeah, we're both magicians. Uh, serious question, yes. Uh, what do you mean by better? Right, because we're talking, remember, we're handling memory. Right, so it was easier for us to, to put something in the global space and copy it into the heap. But that's wasteful. I just created two versions. Like, if I'm going to put something in global memory, then use it. Like, why bring it into the heap? Um, so they're asking us to declare something on the heap. So I felt bad by, like, putting something on the heap by way of the global memory stack. Right? It's more annoying to do it this way, but it's technically more correct. More correct? Mm, I don't want to use the word correct, because both are correct. It's more efficient in terms of its memory allocation. And we and in that way it's better. Right? A program that does something, if you have two programs A and B, and both accomplish the same thing in the same amount of time, the one which uses less memory is better. We could say that. And all if all other things are are the case. And you will find that you can make your programs faster by using more memory. And vice versa. You can use less memory by using more processing time. There's a huge balance to be here, like caught here. Up until you fill up the stack, then you're screwed. Because random access memory is fast and disk, disk space is really, really slow, right? Okay, what's the next question? Uh, save pointers for second and third in the stack frame for main. Well, that's what we did. So, hooray. <laughs> Write statements to shorten the strings to their abbreviations. Which strings cannot be changed in place and why not? Okay, that's a good question. So to shorten Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, all we really need to do is in each instant put the null character at, at element three, right? But the question is, which one is going to tell us we can't do it? Yeah, the Tuesday that's in the global, uh, what do we, is that, I don't want, I keep calling it the global heap, global stack. What, what is it actually called? Global stack? Okay. So the string literal is going to be put in the global stack, and all string literals are considered constants and immutable. So you can't change them. Uh, so let's just write that and, and just prove it, that we can't do it. So I'm going to print first, second, and third. Let's do another print after we do some changes. And what do I want to do? I want to say first, at its third element, is the null character. OK, let's see if that works. Monday. M-O-N. It's right here. Maybe I should make this a bit bigger. Okay, so we got Mun. Okay, I'm going to skip second because it's going to break. Uh, third, I'm just going to put a null character uh, 
at its third position. Okay. What happens if I put back, what did I remove? N? Whole thing came back. It's null character from before is still there. This is why strings are so weird, right? Because technically, remember, we have pointers and endpoints. And this endpoint in this case is the null terminator. So I can remove it, and boom, now you have a longer string. This is why we want you to be really careful, right? Because strings are things that start at pointers and end at null, terminate, null, null characters, right? So if you overwrite one, as you see, I changed. So I had a string that was length 3. Then I changed its last position to n and got a string of length 9. That, that's bizarre behavior unless you understand what's happening in memory. All right, so hopefully now that you start seeing these cryptic error messages, some of them are going to make more sense as you understand how the memory model is operating. Okay, those are the easy ones. Let's do the... Um, okay, first let's see that this is going to be disallowed. Oh, why did I put an n? Empty. Okay. Uh, yes. That would have worked, though, I think. We just got a Wednesday spelt with a zero. Uh, predictions? What kind of error? <laughs> You're technically correct, which is the best kind of correct, right? Okay, now what the error is, right? Oh, very good. How did you know that? You tried it beforehand, didn't you? Yeah. The bus is the thing that's ferrying information between memory addresses. So sometimes you can call for the bus, but like have no passenger waiting for it. In which case the bus is pissed off that it made a trip for no reason. And this is this error. Right? You made you set you asked for the bus and you had no passenger. Right? Try it again. How do I fix this? You can't. You can't. Uh, but can I do this? Whoops. Is that how to change it? Well, how do I change second to Tuesday? What's the what's the problem with moving a pointer? So this will work. Fine. Right? Yeah. It is, yeah. So what I should have done was free second first, right? Will that work? Can I free string literals? Yeah, I don't know about freeing string literals. That's weird. I've never thought about that before. I don't work with strings very often. Um, yeah, we can free. Th we can only free things from the heap. So. Yeah, so there's just no way to get rid of that string literal. It's just in memory. It will get automatically deallocated de at the end, but we can't do this too many times in our program, <coughs> lest we fill up the global global stack. Yeah. Shh. No, Monday's in the heap. Oh, sorry, Monday is in the stack. Tuesday is in the global stack. To, to this? Yeah, so now Tuesday, as well as T-U-E, is in the global stack. Yeah, Tuesday is now memory leaked. Yeah. Well, don't, it, in this case, you wouldn't declare it into, into the stack. You declare it dynamically, is the answer to this question. Yeah. No, no, it's on the stack. Because we told it, we gave it the space to put it on the stack. So it is not a string literal, right? Literals go into the global heap and are, and are immutable. This is mutable. I can change any character of first, which I did <laughs> here, and third. Great. OK. Draw the memory model for your program. Uh, let's not draw it. Let's just talk about it. Um, so what do we got comprehensively? We got three character pointers uh, that which each require, what did we agree one address was? It int? We need three character pointers, which are size of address, size of pointer. Um, we need uh, mm, seven characters in the global heap, 
we need three, six, eight characters in the local stack for main, 10 characters in the heap, and then we have another uh, string literal in the global memory space called Tuesday. So you can draw that, but you can just use your imagination brushes to draw it in your head. Uh, any questions regarding that? Okie dokie. Add to your program so that it declares an array string list of three pointers to first, second, and third. All right. So they want us to put uh, these first, second, and third into pointers, uh, into a uh, array of pointers. So how do I, what's the data type I need? OK, so I need to have an array. I need to point to pointers. Make sense? OK. Uh, I'm going to call this pointers. And I'm just going to allocate it. Wait, can I do this? No, I can't do this. I have to malloc some space now, right? No, I don't have to do this. I can also say I need three, which means I don't need this, which means I do this. OK, hold on. Before I explain this, let's make sure that it works. Uh, first, second, third. Yeah, it worked. So you have problems with this? Fight me. Uh, so what did I declare here, right? So point, like when you use the square brackets in a declaration, that automatically makes it a pointer. Oh, actually, I, I probably should have just done this. This is safer. Yeah. You don't have to put the number there. Because like when this thing is read by the operating system, when, it's get, when, when the compiler is compiling this into executable code, it can see that there's an empty space there. Go, OK, hold on. I'm going to count the number of commas subsequent to this, and then go back and then put the number there. Right? It doesn't really take that much energy to to put those numbers in there automatically. So it's safer. It's safer to leave it out. But you may increase the time at compilation, which is fine. You guys have never written anything so complicated that you have to go have lunch when you hit compile and come back to see, oh, syntax error, line 9. Great. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and it was even worse for my dad. He, he was a programmer in Calgary uh, back in the days where you had to like punch holes in cards. And you'd send your cards away and get an answer two days later. And it'd be like, syntax error. <laughs> Right. Like, great. So be thankful that you can see all your syntax errors immediately. Uh, OK, so that's easy. We have uh, an array of pointers. I don't think this is very hard. The next question is going to up the, up the difficulty of this. OK, we don't really do anything in main. Right? Main just captures stuff from, like main basically is the procedure or function which handles like the command line arguments. Right? Really, everything is going to be written by you in functions, and main is going to invoke that stuff around. Okay, So we don't want to do any of this in main. Let's do all of this in another function. So I'm going to declare another function. Uh, what, does it want to, to, what would happen if you changed main to another function func and then return from it? Uh, which parts of your? OK, so it wants us to write a new function. I'm going to call it foo that allocates, initializes, and returns an array of three strings. OK, OK. And all the strings have to be mutable. OK, so we have to write a function which returns an array of three strings that are all mutable, right? So they can't live in the global, they can't live in the global memory, because that would be immutable, because they're string constants. So this may be harder than you think, right? Because, OK, let's just do this. Uh, so I'm going to kill everything in my main. I'm going to do it in a way that's going to bother all of you. Oh, look at this. Oh, I'm just going to go left. Boom. Ooh. OK. <laughs> I only get to do that once in a while, like where it actually is helpful. Um, but when I do, I'm like, oh, I feel, oh, I'm writing 15 programs at once. Uh, OK, int. Wait, does it want to be an int? What do we have to return? OK, so we have to write a function which is returning an array of strings. So what should the return type for this be? OK, so I need to return a pointer to character pointers. Yeah. What do I take? I take nothing. It's like the opposite of the Spartans. OK, uh, we need to declare three strings. And those strings have to be returned to somewhere. 
So what happens? So what do I want? Same stuff. Okay, I'm just gonna call it uh, character January equals January. Character February equals February. Is this wrong? Stop messing with me, man. I suck at spelling, right? Both of my parents are immigrants from different countries, neither of which are English-speaking countries, right? So I'm just going to change this to an X, right? Who cares, right? To, to be determined later. Uh, March? Right. It doesn't matter, right? Who cares? We're computer scientists. We don't need to spell, right? Like, look. The fact that I spelled this is wrong, right? I got to learn how to spell worse, right? In order to just take all the vowels out. That's what happened with my last name, right? It was brought into C. What's wrong with this? Yes. Did everyone hear that? Where are these allocated as strings? So what happens when foo returns? deallocates it. I can't return strings like this from a function. I can't put them in the global heap or stack. So what's the, given that I've excluded all other options, where's the last place that we can actually put these so that everyone can use it? Huh? What? Cache, cache the pointers? Well, I don't know if you know something cool that I don't know. Uh, <laughs> We have three types of memory, global memory, stack memory, and heap memory. We can't put it in the global memory space. We can't put it in the stack. Where do we put it? Thank God, right? How do I put them in the heap? Yeah. I'm going to have to do that thing again. Uh, okay, you know what? I'm only going to do three. Let's just, let's just return the... Let's just return, yeah, three. I don't want to allocate everything, unless you'll allow me to cheat, but that just feels bad. Uh, okay, so, no, wait, what? I can't do any of this. I need to malloc. Oh, God. It's gonna haunt your dreams. Uh, okay, I want to malloc three times size of character. All right. Uh, then I want to say, oh, I don't want to, but I have to. Uh, Jeez, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then the thing that you don't like. Oh, I can't because there's spaces. Boo, I can do it like this, right? Uh, okay, do that, do that, go here. And go here. Burp, 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 burp. Okay, so 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. I wonder if we can like get rid of string literals from the global heap, though, because then someone could write a nice function for like loading something into the heap, which wouldn't be wasteful. But if I had that idea, surely someone smarter than me had that idea. So if it was going to be done, it should be done. So I'm going to assume that there's a good technical reason this can't be done. Generally, if you have an idea, in, like that I should program something, you have to go through the same thought process that I just did. Well, I had this idea, and I'm not the greatest computer scientist in the world. Surely someone else had this idea, is, was better than me, and have, has already implemented it. So you should always do a little bit of searching before writing something for yourself. Okay, J-A-N-F-E-B-M-A-X. Okay. Next question. I now need to return an array comprised of pointers to these. How do I do that? Yeah. You think? You know. <laughs> deep within your heart, right? Well, why would it be bad to declare it on the stack? You're gonna have a you're gonna have a pointer to like deallocated part of the stack memory. Does everyone understand that? Okay. So again, I have to malloc. So now do you understand what the heap is for? 
It's places where you want to uh, pass like values around where you need it to be persistent but not globally accessible. Like something that's globally accessible is in the global namespace, right? If you just want to pass around a list, right, without putting that list in the global namespace, you have to do it by dynamic memory allocation. Yes? Well, the fact that it was deallocated to all is like there's nothing preventing you from not deallocating ever because like everything will be deallocated when the function terminates. It's just better policy to do it. Like I'm going to try to come up with an assignment where you are at, where you actually have to push your computer a little bit hard, right? Where you, where you are going to fill up your stack and start realizing like I don't know if this is going to be possible because first we have to restrict your like RAM to like maybe a few megabytes, right? And then I want to design a program where it's like if you don't do the memory allocation properly, you're going to fail every time. Like I want to give you a problem which is mem memory limited. Like, whereas, like, I could solve this problem immediately if I just had double the amount of, like, memory. It's like, yeah, well, good. <laughs> but when you have this much memory, so do it with this much memory. But we'll see. We had another question over here. Yeah. No, because that would put it, well, we could do it that way, but then that declares, actually, yeah, there's nothing wrong with doing it that way. No one, we were never asked to declare January, February, max or march on the local stack. We could have put it in the global memory heap. Yes, which puts them on the heap, not the global memory heap, the programmer's heap, our heap. Yeah, you're saying you want us to do this, right? Like January is equal to Jan. But this is not the same. This is totally different. This is creating a string literal, putting it in global memory space, and making it immutable. Now, this question actually specified that the strings being returned have to be mutable. So we're actually not allowed, in this case, to put January, February, March onto the global stack for those reasons. And you really shouldn't do it anyways. right? You don't put anything in the global stack unless you properly need a global, globally allocated function. Yeah. But that puts it on the stack, right? That, that whole uh, notation for declaring an array. So first of all, you can only ever use curly braces at, a function, at, when you're at time of declaration, right? You, you can't say, this is a character pointer, a is equal to like curly brace, curly brace. It, it has to be at execution. And it has to know, at that point, you're telling it how wide it is. So it's going to put it on the stack. This, this is why this is a nice problem. There's really only one way to do it. So how do I return these back? I think we had an answer before. I need a uh, character. I need to point to pointers. This needs to be pointers, and I need to malloc some space. How much space do I need for this? I need to return three pointers. Character pointer. Perfect. OK, so let's try to grab this at this level. So let's say I have a character pointer to pointers. Let's say that pointers are uh, gets, what did I call this, foo? Uh, and let's not do too much. What did I do? Oh, yeah, double pointer. I need to point to pointers. Yes, I, yes, you are correct. So I need to say this. That would be better. Did I not return anything? Oh no, I didn't. So this is what this is what programming in other languages does to you. It makes you lazy. Because in most other languages, it would be every function would simply return the last thing that it computed. Okay, that, that, that worked. Okay. Uh, so the condition was that we have to be able to change these now in main. So let's do that. So first I want to print through, let's just print through them. Hmm? Oh, I actually, yeah, I didn't load the pointers. So let's do that next. Uh, and let's just, pardon me? I'm proud of you guys. Proud of you guys for catching all of my stupid errors. So that means you're actually doing your work. Uh, string, 
And then I want to print uh, whatever is the pointer at k. OK. So let's actually load some stuff into pointers. How do I do that? Now, see, I'd want to do something like this, but you're not allowed. You don't have this. You don't have this outside of. And so I just have to do it manually. <laughs> pointers at 0 is January. Pointers at 1 is February. Pointers at 2 is March. So this should now print as expected. Great. OK. The other thing that we had to ensure is that each of these strings are mutable. So let's see if I can change pointers at k, its first element, to, I don't know, what's your favorite letter? B. It's the worst letter. Band Beb Bax. It's the name of my band, actually. Uh, OK, everyone's savvy with that. This is an important example to do on your own. Yeah. Uh, OK, so in each of these cases, I can use string copy. But that's lazy programming, right? Because you're filling up the global memory space with string literals that you're like just never using again. So you're defining a string literal just for the specific purposes of defining a stack variable, which you're too lazy to type in. Right? That's the real answer, right? Because remember, like, if we want to be lazy and have the system handle everything, we should just be programming in Python or something. Right? The whole purpose of this is that we're saying exactly how to allocate memory, and uh, we're saying to the computer, we'll actually, like, handle most of this for you. We don't trust you. And so, uh, anything else regarding this? So, yeah. You can never do that. It has nothing to do with pointers. Like, watch, I can't say, OK, look, I can say int x is equal to 1, 2, 3, OK? And I can say int, this is a character, this is a character pointer. Ah, oh, this is a pointer to, a, to an integers, right? So something like this, you want, you want to do this? Is your question, why can't I, why don't I do this? OK, who has an answer? Why, why can't I do this? Well, it's more than that. It's 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 a syntax error, right? No, we don't have the notion of literals like for arrays. This is only something that we have for strings, right? Have you never tried doing? I'm surprised. Never. N none of you have discovered this. Just this is like the first thing I tried as a new programmer in C. It's like surely I can define something like this. OK, so did you miss what I said before? The reason that this works is because, OK, so we usually have to do this, right? But we can do this. And the reason we can do this is because when the compiler gets to this line, it's going to read left to right, and it's going to go, I need to, I need to declare some space for an integer pointer and I have to figure out the size. So hold on, the size is 1, 2, 3, I'll write 3, and then the close, right? The compiler can compute the necessary width of the thing that it needs to put into space simply by counting commas, right? So it's just notation for something that can be done at comp compilation time. But think about what this means, right? This is a very loaded instruction now, right? This basically is telling C, OK, I would like for you to go declare three integers on the stack for me, make sure they're beside each other, and then return to me the pointer of the first thing. You just can't create arrays like this, right? So that's the answer to your question. I would have liked to do what you said. It's just not something that you can do in Python, right? You can't, this is something that you can't, can't do it in C. This is something that you can do in Python naturally, right? Whoops, I don't want to return all of that. OK, so any other ones? with this, because I think we're moving on to something totally different now. All right. Bless you. Program input. So the other thing we want to be able to do is interact with the user in meaningful ways, right? Not just by a keyboard, by piping, which you guys hate pipes yet? <laughs> if we put a pipe question on your exam or in your midterm, then you'll be able to handle it. Given that there is so much talk and discussion about pipes, do you think maybe there's probably going to be a pipe question on your midterm? 
Definitely not. Yeah, you can bank on that one. <laughs> no, bank on the opposite. Right? If there's not one there, I'm going to put one there. It's important you, you, you have these under control. You'll, you'll thank us much, much later. Okay, so there's tons of ways of getting access from... There's a, there's a myriad of ways of getting input from the user. Right? You can use a standard input. That's just the abstraction of input. It's like, just take something from the pipe. I don't care what's, how someone's put something into the pipe. Um, there are regular and special files. Remember like the first lecture? What's the Unix philosophy regarding files? Everything is a file. So a special file can be something like a device driver or like a piano that you hook in to your computer, right? So um, those are other ways that you can give input to, the, to a program. You can receive data over a network. So we're going to have to learn about sockets. This is at the end of the end of this class, no, end of this course, yes. And um, the last way to do it is taking command line arguments, right? So suppose you want to write a program which, I don't know, wants to do something and you need to know, actually, let's just do the problem. Suppose I want to write a program that says print out my name n amount of times, right? My name and the number of times to print my name would be great command line arguments. Okay? I wouldn't want to write... You don't want to write a program which prompts the user for that, right? That's, you don't want your program to stop and wait for the keyboard. Yeah, I generally don't like the uh, computer to human APIs. They're very slow and humans are unreliable. Okay, so remember, this is how we call programs from the command line. Um, so if we had some type of uh, executable called mycalc, I can say dot slash mycalc, uh, add the numbers 54321 perhaps. Those are all going to be command line arguments. If I called my calc like this, what is the value of arg c? Okay, who says six? Who says seven? Who's abstaining? I'm looking. I'm cataloging who's not voting in my mind. I'm writing down, writing down who to grade extra hard. I'm just joking. I don't know any of your names. I could have marked you down if I wanted to. Uh, why do we need the string tool function? Or not string tool. String to L. String to long is how we should read this. Why do we need the string to long function? Yeah. It would be nice. Well, I don't know. But you know if you try to... If you try to integer cast the character 7, it's not going to give you 7. It's going to give you the ASCII value for 7, which isn't 7. Now, <laughs> when, you were, when you learned Python, it was the case that you could integer cast characters. Um, that's not the case in C. So if you develop that habit, you have to break it now. Right? So you need this spe special string to long function in order to cast strings to their corresponding integer or base 10 representations. Suppose you have a program named prog.c. What is the instruction you would type into the command line to compile this program and create an exe executable named prog? Don't tell me. Write it down. And I'm going to show you. And then if you get it wrong, you have to worry. You have 30 seconds. A program named prog.c. What is the instruction to compile it into prog? Ten seconds are over. Did you write this? Okay, good. So I can put that on your midterm. You'll all get it right. You now have an executable function, or you now have an executable called prog, or prog, prog, p-r-o-g. Assuming it is in your current working directory, give the command to run that executable with the command line arguments dash k3 my file. Ten seconds. Just write it down, just so you know if you uh, could answer this on a midterm. You all get this? All right, so you just, answer's easy. You just stick the command line arguments after your executable, but make sure you have to run your executable with a dot slash. Assume that the executable is in your parent directory. So the executable is now one directory behind. Give the command to run the executable without any command line arguments. The executable is named prog. 10 seconds. Should be able to do this stuff instantly. When I say know how to navigate Unix for your midterm, this is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. 
And I hope you can do it because these are going to be the giveaway questions. I usually try to like generate some confidence by giving you easy questions at the beginning. So it would be terrible if the confidence generating questions you couldn't answer. Okay, it means you have to go backwards one and then call prong. Right? You get that? Yeah. You can't tie those. That's two commands. Give the command, right? The, singular, one, right? Is that okay, though? Like, like, you have to read the question and answer the question. If there's ambiguity in the question, that's on us. If the question's not ambiguous, that's on you. And this is definitely not ambiguous. It says the command, the singular, all right? Assume that the executable is in your current working hands, yes. Assume that the executable is in your current working directory. Give the command to run the executable, where the resulting output is redirected to a file test1.out. So redirect the output from your executable to this test1.out file. Did you manage to write this? Okay, so remember, the greater than and less than symbols. right? You really have to see this as like, what's coming out of program is going into test1.out. It's like, it, it, that's what that symbol is sort of trying to imply. Like, take what's coming out and siphon it in. Right, so it's like, it's almost, you can see it as an arrow, saying out from here goes into here, yeah. So remember when I was um, trying to show you how to use pipes, and I was using files, and I had to say something like cat this, and then redirect its output to this? You use redirection if you're just like working with files, right? Because you're always going to have to say, send this file through some output so I can cat pipe that into, into something else, right? So you can always, this is specifically for redirecting input and output as files. Right? Not tying together processes, which would require a pipe. Yeah. When you run the program and it interacts with the user, and expecting the user to type input, give the command to run the program and redirect the input so that the executable instead reads from some file.txt. How do you do this? Right, so you wrote, a, you wrote, a, you wrote an executable. It... it, it it assumes that it's getting input from the user from the keyboard. What is the command line argument to say, don't take it from the keyboard, take it from this file instead? It's this, right? Execute this program, but take, but direct the contents of some file into program. Savvy? Yeah. Yeah, you could do cat some file dot text pipe to program, but if you want to do it that way, sure. But like, you're gonna get irritated by having to like, we're gonna be working with files a lot, right? And we're gonna have to say, for a pipe, something has to be put into standard output. So for a file, you're gonna always have to say, just print this to the screen, just so I can get it into the output pipe, right? So you'll get so irritated with that that you're gonna. This is why the notation was invented, basically, so you didn't have to do that. But it's the same pipe infrastructure being used here. Yeah. Yes. Pardon me? Okay, but we're not, okay, so yes, that's true, but we so har, far haven't redirected anything into a file. We're redirecting the contents of a file into a program. Okay, so to address your question, run the executable program with the command line arguments dash k and three and my file. Reading input from the standard input, redirected from some file.txt, and redirecting it to output. This is what you want to do. You want to run your program program with the three command line arguments. You want to take a file as input, and you want to say the output should go along, should be put into the file test1.out. Right. Seems more complicated than it is. Okay, here it is. Run my program with these command line arguments, taking input from some file.txt and writing the output to test1.out. Now to answer this gentleman's question, if something is in test1.out, 
it gets overwritten, right? Period. It's not, it's, it, it, if it's not there, it creates it and writes it. If it is there, it overwrites it, right? So nothing is ever going to stop you from overwriting a file or removing a file or copying a file, right? Stop. I'm sorry. You have to ask your, that doesn't make any sense, that question. What do you mean redirect the end of the file? Files don't give output. There you go. So there's a program, and any program can output something along its output pipe. If we put in this redirection, it's going to say capture anything coming from the output pipe and put it into a file rather than printing it to the screen. Pardon me? This is basically just a different notation for piping when exclusively dealing with files. Because as this gentleman said at the front, can I just say cat this file and then pipe? Right. Uh, in order, so to get it hooked up to the output pipe, though, I don't know how you'd do that with a pipe. You'd have to have, have some capture process, which took in and then wrote a file. Right. So, yeah, this is somehow this really does give you, like helps you uh, with files, inputting and outputting files. Like we really do need this extra level. Right. Even though yes, we could duplicate all of the functionality exclusively with pipes. But that's going to get quite messy. So this is the philosophy of computer science. Like don't, don't try to create too much functionality. But if you do find that you're doing something a lot, then it's OK to like add more functionality to simplify that thing that's being done a lot. And that's exactly this. So again, it's like the, treat, treat these like greater than and less than as like arrows. Like take this and suck it in, and take it and, and put it out. Right? So this is one of the, again, to read this, we are running the executable program with the command line arguments dash k3 and my file. We're telling program to take its standard input from some file.txt and to redirect its standard output to test1.out. Yes, sir. Doesn't matter. It's still saying this gets connected to the output pipe and this gets connected to the input pipe. Yes. Okay, so it is the case that you can use double out double brackets to do concatenation rather than overwrite. I don't know if there's a double double thing in, but I don't what that really wouldn't make any sense. Nothing's getting destroyed, right? But like, what would the other mo read mode be? I don't know. Backwards read. I don't know. So I'm gonna say no, but maybe I don't know. I, you should be careful asking me questions like that because often I'm gonna say I don't know. You should find out and get back to me next class. Right? You're just giving yourself more work. Uh, okay, so you should go home and write a program which prints something from the standard input and maybe reverses it and pushes it along standard output and then play with this. You need to play with C rather than just listening to me talk. You have to sit down and just experiment a bit. Okay, so as the last thing before we go, still have a half hour, we can probably do this. Uh, let's go through all of the active learning exercises together again. So we want to write a piece of code that prints the first two command line arguments. That doesn't seem too hard. Uh, let's just erase this. Goodbye. And goodbye. OK. How can I write a program that prints the first two command line arguments? Well, write a loop for k equals 1, or int k equals 1. k is less than 2, k plus plus. I want to print f. The command line argument. Let's put a new line. And huh? Oh, I set it to one. No, hold on, hold on. I have to go from one to three. I'll say equal to two. That's going to give me definitely two, right? Because remember, the first command line argument is the process itself. Uh, okay, so I need to print argv of k. And for the time being, let's just start from zero so we can see what happens. Okay, so what I call this sandbox. Let's uh, let's just compile this as foo. Uh, what did I call it? Sandbox. Do I get it? Foo. Okay, so here's foo. I'm gonna give it some command line arguments. One, two, three. Command not found. Oh, yes, exactly. Right. So here are the first three command line arguments. The process itself. And the subsequent two. All right, so actually, 
I'm sort of misspeaking because this isn't, this isn't technically a command line argument. It's, it's part of the argument vector. These are the command line arguments. So if I say something like print the command line arguments, implicit in that statement is, is to skip this actual process. So uh, let's start from 1. Uh, so now I can say this and get 1, 2. Oh, so there's actually three command line arguments. I'm just not printing to the, to the third. So, like, well, it's still there. I just didn't print it. I, I printed the first two. If I change this to argc, for example, right, then it's just going to count to the top. Whoops. Oh, yes, less than argc. What's happening here? How come I can't use this? Seems fine. Oh. Can't spell <laughs> fake words, can't spell real words. There's just no hope for me. We'll print all of them. How do I put a string in here? Is this OK? Is this different? I don't think so. Right? Uh, run your program with two command line arguments. We did it. Oh. Run your program with two command line arguments, your name and your power level, OK? Your power level is just, I don't know, power level. My power level is 5. Yeah. What's up? Shh. Yeah. They are different, it seems, right? So be careful. I think one's being interpreted, yeah. So this is being interpreted as a string literal, right? That's why this is still here. And this, uh, so this is different. At the command line, I don't want to talk about this because I'm not, I'm not, I'll be talking on my ass. <laughs> go, go ask for a kid, right? But uh, yeah, funny stuff happens at the command line level. Like, I don't know what this is now. Oh, it's an escape character. Yeah, but how come it didn't, it escaped and did nothing and left the zero? I just, I don't know, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Just, just write down something to put in your evaluation. I did not know <laughs> what, what an escape character did at the command line level. I do know what happens at this level, so let's focus on that. So uh, run, run your program with two command line arguments, your name and your power level. OK, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this back to um, 2 equal then. All right, so uh, foo, my name is Verbic. My power level is 5. Actually, it's 6. It's beyond the power level that you guys can choose. You guys have to stop at 5. Well, I get six. Uh, OK, so we did that. Modify your program so that it prints your name and power. Modify your program so that it prints your name power level many times. OK, but before that, uh, what happens if I call? So this is printing two command line arguments. So what happens if I don't give it anything? Prints garbage. Yeah. So like I Googled this. I'm like, what, what is this? Um, I ended up finding it. It's in my bash profile. I, I don't. <laughs> so I don't know. It somehow was grabbing. St it like makes sense. The bash profile is loaded by Unix, right? So maybe this is just living in memory somewhere, and it's just okay. This is what happens to be here, right? So it's it's weird. <laughs> so C is weird. Uh, what happens if I give it? I don't know, one command line argument, but not the other. Yeah. So I think that null character is basically saying, okay, it's the, this is where you should stop looking for command line arguments, right? There's not this null character. And anything after is other some, is something else, right? So be careful. But this is funny, right? Because you can or, already now pull stuff from the uh, from memory, which you're not supposed to have access to, maybe. Right? What happens if I ask for the command line argument like a hundred point? Yeah. Oh, like, could I try to hack this so that, like, I have access, like, I have technically an argument pointer to that. I try it and my computer just explodes. Um, that's a good question. Why don't we come back to that next week because I'm running out of time. Why don't you uh, look into that and follow up with me? Oh, okay, it'll, it'll take one second. Um, 
So what did we do? Okay, first let, let, let's try some... Let's just try... I think this is still technically, uh, technically okay. Okay, what I want to do is try to trick this into printing like some random argument, like far. So what I want to do is let's write a program where it's going to take two, where it takes one option. I'm going to give it like a number, and then this is going to print that command line argument. So this is actually good because I have to use all the other tools. Um, you go home and do the other thing. This is more interesting, I think. Uh, okay, so I need to grab the first argument and need to cast it into an integer. So I'm going to take n. I need to find the first argument, which is 1. And then I need to string to Elvis, which means this should be a long int, I guess. Is that right? Oh, right. I need to tell it. I need to tell it, I don't care where you stop. You have to give this two pointers, the pointer to the beginning of the thing, and it's going to say, I'm going to tell you where I stopped in a return pointer, which I'm just going to say null. And then I think I have to tell it it's base 10. I think if I say 0, it's just going to read it, read it like that. OK. Um, so we should always just see if we can do this uh, long integer. And let's do uh, n. LD. LD. Cut. Does it? No, you also told me Wednesday didn't have an N in it, so I'm skeptical of you now. Uh, what did I call it? Sandbox? Uh, let's see. So foo. So this should just print out the number that I give it. 17. OK. So let's get this to print out the string for what I find at this command line argument. OK, so let's just make sure we can do it. So if I tell it to give me the command line argument 1, it should give me 1, right? OK, so let's see. We're hacking now. So if I give it 2, it's going to give me this null, which is going to say, you shouldn't ask for anything beyond here. This is the end of the argument vector, but haha, <laughs> screw you. We're C programmers. That gives us this. OK, yeah, this is just my bash profile. That's super weird, isn't it? OK, let's, let's see how. <laughs> OK. Oh, that's bad. See? Now I've like figured out, OK, so I've written a program, which has now managed to escape its memory space, get into the bash profile of the person calling it, and manage to find a, a directory variable. So you imagine now that I write a program which points to this and changes this. Now you're beginning to see. How hacking can get possible. I shouldn't be teaching you. You don't deserve this power yet, <laughs> right? But this is the answer to how you hack, right? You just get, you start really developing a very rigid understanding of the memory model, and you s start doing stuff like this. Like, oh, isn't this weird if I print out the 10th argument vector that is giving me access to this temporary variable that user is declared here, right? So you have to be very, 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 very careful with C. Right, because you're really just walking around the operating system and it's letting you do anything you want. Uh, you guys could really do some damage to those dear Phil Halt computers. It's, it's unfortunate because I'm sure if one of you destroyed it, that would be like, this is an academic offense, you're kicked out. Whereas when I did this in school, they're like, wow, you should be a TA for us. <laughs> right? That's how I found myself in this position. Wow. The good old days, I suppose. Um, Right, OK, so you go home now and you do this, because that would be, be a good exercise. Just write a program which takes two arguments, your name and uh, a number, which then goes and prints off your name that, that number of times. Right? You're, you're going to have to like, use string tall, right? but it, it's good to practice. Now, um, as a final exercise before we leave today, I just want to talk about structs. Now, structs can be, dy can, are, can be dynamically or statically allocated. The fact that they can be statically allocated means that the compiler is able to determine how much memory needs to be allocated for a struct. Right? Because you're telling it, look, a struct is basically just a collection of the following things. Right? So when C gets to a struct declaration, it can really say, I need to go and declare 20 characters and an integer. Right? So what is the size of this struct?
Okay, so I'm gonna go type it into my compiler because I I had an answer, but now I'm now I'm skeptical about that answer because I was gonna say, oh, you just need 20 characters and a name and a number, but then how much do you need to actually store the struct? Like, does that get a pointer? I really shouldn't think out loud like this. It really doesn't inspire confidence. But uh, it's better than me bullshitting you. All right, so here we go. We can just ask. Uh, care name 20 and int student number. I'll just call it this. Num. Uh, how come this isn't syntax highlighted? Because I misspelled it. Can't spell real words, can't spell fake words. Story of my life. Okay, let's declare a st oh, I need to type def this. <sighs> okay, so I have to do that because otherwise I can't declare this. Uh, so let's declare a st type def, wait, struct student is me. Will this work? Here? Hmm. I still don't think it's going to work. Okay, hold on, hold on. You, tell me what to do. Okay, so this should be type def student. No. Before this semicolon. Type def? Student. I'm losing it. One person needs to be talking. Okay, you can talk. Yeah. This one. This one. It's going to allow me to define this? Yes. All right. Okay. Jeez, how come we have to use type def in... Oh, because, yeah, I, it had to be, that was for linked lists specifically. Right, because I need to call the struct from within the struct. That's why I needed the type deck. Okay, sorry. Printf, uh, long integer, uh, size of, I forgot the percent. Uh, size of, should be size of me, right? Well, I can also ask for the size of student, which should be the same as the size of me. Do I have to say struct here? Okay, because I don't have type def. If I use type def, then I could just call student. Okay. Okay, so let's, as good programmers, we need to predict the output before you look at the output. So I'll try to predict the output. Now, my guess is that, I'm going to amend it. My guess is that it's going to be at least, what's the size of an int? Four? And the size of a car is one. So this is going to be at least 24. But I think we need another int, because like something needs to point to this structure. So maybe 28? I say 28. At least 24, exactly 28. What other guesses do we got? One dollar, Bob. Okay. Uh, or let's just give it a try. Oh, I need to actually run this. 24. Okay, so I was right, originally. Okay, so the pointer is not actually. Oh, so I guess we haven't actually like. Yeah, so I guess me is itself like has a memory address to this place in memory, right? So like when we declare an integer, we don't also say we have to declare like the variable itself. The integer just gets declared. All oh, right, because value like variables are essentially just abstractions for their memory address. So you don't. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Twenty four is the answer. Right, because you have 20 characters and one integer, one integer, that's 24 bytes. Um, okay, so we're going to start next week at pointing to structs. Get home safely. And I'll put this on YouTube in case you want to watch it. And from who's in my who's from morning class here? Remind me to tell the students that I put this lecture online. Yeah. I'll probably throw it on Discuss or something, or maybe probably through Quirkus because that's like internal. Yeah. What did I miss for the first hour?